in so many places, as Prabhupada gave a teaching in so many places of the origination. And then a counter teaching comes in that says, no, ultimately it's not true, but it's good in the beginning. Remember the Maya bodies say, it's good to do bhakti yoga and the sa rupa, sa form worship, but ultimately it's impersonal. Once you reach the stage where you realize the white light, then give up the deity worship because ultimately the thing is impersonal. But let us deceive you. It is to deceive the disciples. Let us deceive you in the beginning because then with that deception, you can get really energized on your deception. And then when you get to the mature stage, oh, by the way, what we were telling you there, it ain't so. So in the same way, The Maya bodies bring you to a point where you say, I am Brahman, I am God, I'm not Dasa, I'm not eternally Dasa, I'm not eternally a servant. Through sometimes praising, some of them sometimes praise the process of bhakti as a preliminary stage. So there's a deception in that. So similarly, if you get the teachings from the Sampradaya Acharya, that you're originally in the spiritual world, with your rasa active, Sambandha was there. But then you're told by some other party, who may even have been initiated by the Sampradaya Acharya, and maybe technically a quote-unquote older god-brother, that, you know, that nature teaching that he gave us, I've come to the realization it's not so. We ultimately were not in the spiritual sky with Krishna. It's not right. It's not what my cult that I'm into now teaches. Then it's the same process of that deception. Yeah. So then you can entertain in your mind, well, maybe then if that isn't so, maybe it's ultimately that I'm also God. And I'm being told I'm not God as a technique so that I can get fired up to do my sadhana. So it, it sets you up for for developing that mentality of, as you say, of um, uh, revising the path as you go along. It, it lets you look at the Guru's teachings as potentially all deceptive. If he deceived on this, why not this also? Hmm. If he said 50 times in his teachings, that you weren't in the spiritual, that you were in the spiritual sky, and one time he says something which needs lakshana vritti or gauna vritti understanding, not direct, where mukya vritti is not directly to be applied to it. But if you use mukya vritti to it, which you shouldn't, you could say that he's saying you weren't in the spiritual sky. The ratio is so lopsided, and if explanations are given very clearly that that's Lakshana Vritti, that's Gauna Vritti. Here's why he's saying it. When he says, this is an unprecedented event that Jaya and Vijaya were sent out of the spiritual sky because ultimately no one form, falls from the spiritual world. You say, there it is, case closed. No, he's saying there, you have to use Gauna Vritti, Lakshana Vritti. He's saying, no one who has not misused their independence faults. But they didn't misuse because they still had the service attitude. They made a mistake with the Kumars, but it was in service attitude, they're guarding the gate. They didn't give up their service, they didn't give up their service attitude. And they were sent down. You're not supposed to be sent down for that. You're supposed to be sent down when you misuse your free will. That's what's being talked about in the sentence. Hmm. Still not convinced? I know. That's all really good stuff. Um, I'd just like to explore more because I think yeah, I, keep I, exploring. I, I think that um, because in one of your articles, recent mm -hmm. ones, you were talking about how Prabhupada was la launched full scale revolution. Not just against uh, modern Hindu, uh, Hinduism, but against you know, kind of use quite grand words, you know, 
this was like a theological revolution because he was saying how we're we were with Krishna and we have a direct relationship with Krishna it just has to be revived and that that's quite um, revolutionary actually revolutionary is a good word because revolution means you revolve revolution to the to an original point so revolution means there was a good point and we need to have a revolution back to the good point. Mm -hmm. That's also what I'm saying in regard to devotees need to have a revolution and go back to square one. I'm also preaching that. Why? Am I saying, is, am I being a fanatic on that? No. I'm not saying close down the temples, sell all the vehicles, wrap up the deities and drop them into a river. I'm not saying any such thing. That's not square one. Square one means to go back to square one before all the wrong octaves started taking place. Mm. All the deviant octaves, which now are devolutionary octaves, going in the opposite direction. For a while they were ascending, but they were deviant, meaning that they weren't going the straight arrow, they had deviated to something else, but now they're not even that. They're descending octaves. But I'm saying, stop all that, get back to square one. Where did we go off the rails? We have to go back to that. That's called a revolution, to go back to that. So how is that revolutionary? How is it revolutionary for Prabhupada to say, we, we were with Krishna in the spiritual sky, we've fallen into the material world because of our misuse of independence, now we need to revive that relationship and go back home, back to Godhead. It's a revolution to the original teachings of Bhakti Manod Thakur, who of course Sampradaya Acharya, then through the whole parampara of Bhakti Manod Thakur. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati's teachings were that too, but he, he didn't make it as explicit, because he really was dealing with the Mayavadis. Of course Bhakti Manod Thakur also was dealing with the Mayavadis. Now, what happened after Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Goswami was no longer with us, that he is different from the real thing. So we need to get a revolution back, and that's what Prabhupada did. He rejected this, and he, he went back and revolved back to the real teachings, which were completely against this thing that had become encrusted after Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Goswami left. Mm -hmm. So it's a revolution back to the parampara, the real teachings. That's why Prabhupada doesn't include anybody is Gorkashore Das Babaji, of course, but Bhakti Manod Thakur, and then because it's a Diksha line there, Gorkashore Das Babaji, and then Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Goswami, you have the Parampara work like that, and then Prabhupada, there's nobody in between there. And he's going back and saying, here's what these teachings were, and then, but in the interim, there's been another thing in regard to this Siddhanta, but I'm not buying it, I'm not giving it, I'm telling you what the actual Siddhanta is, it's a revolution back to the Siddhanta. So all this one that has been a deviation from much further, much uh, longer ago than when Prabhupada came, they're all, their disciples are all saying, this is not the teaching, this is a concoction. No, it is the teaching, it's a revolution back to the real thing.